everyone, this is Mike, and this is a uh, sci-fi painting I did recently with kind of like a Blade Runner type vibe going on here. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to do a little tutorial of sorts, uh, kind of showing the process that I went through as I created this painting. So this was done in Photoshop CS6 using a Wacom Intuos 3 12 by 9 inch tablet. And you can see on the right here all these layers. Now each one is kind of like a, kind of like a stamp in time as I was creating this picture here. So I'm going to turn all of these off, and we're going to go through each one, go all the way down. Okay, so here, you know, starting with a blank, blank canvas, all I have is a clear image of my head of what I want to do. So I have a lot of creative energy at this point, a lot of motivation and excitement to start. So boom, first layer. Again, clear image of my head, a lot of motivation, a lot of energy, so I want to get all of that energy down in big chunky paint strokes. Establishing the major subject matter here, for instance, uh, main face, man's face, in the center of the picture plane, two light sources, one from the left, one from the right, two different colors, about the same intensity. Um, it's going to be a collage of sorts, so kind of dividing it into left and right environments. So on the right here, you have some buildings here, some big chunky shapes, uh, a main hue and value to start the sky off and some type of water feature here maybe ocean or lake of some sort and on the left another kind of city environment this one's a bit closer it's gonna have a major focal point here uh, different story kind of a different subject matter okay let's get rid of that layer okay next layer see the difference there okay so we've established some more values for the sky now give it a bit more life Let's see what else. Establish some more uh, building shapes. I'm trying to get some nice silhouettes here. Always looking in the upper right navigator window to see if the composition is working. Some more shapes on the left side here. A main building in the background. Darkened up this wall here. Um, established some type of road in the background here. Um, some w representation of some water, which is really great because it um, keeps it a bit darker, more dingy, grimy, more realistic. Um, it also has that kind of sci-fi, cyberpunk, kind of Blade Runner type feel to it too. And it adds uh, the ability um, and the option to create some nice reflections of the sky and background to make the whole scene feel a bit more alive. Let's get rid of that layer. Okay, next one here. Boom, boom, off and on. So here I've established uh, one of the major light sources here for this side, the sun, which is setting behind these buildings. I thought it looked kind of neat and it creates a nice contrast with these buildings and some, some nice options for lighting too. Uh, some smoke in the sky, again, um, add some nice flow to the scene, leads your eye down here, back into the picture. Uh, some like, nice uh, contrast with the sky. Um, it makes the city look a bit more alive and kind of industrialized too, which is the look I was going for. And a little bit more grimy as well. And let's see what else we added here. Yeah, a bit more color in the sky. Ref did I refine? Yeah, I refined the buildings a little more. And also added some highlights here too on the water. Make it a bit uh, more alive, more wavy, add more contrast. It also, this is a one point perspective on this side. There's a horizon line, main vantage points there. So your eye gets led across the water to the background in the city here too. Let's turn this off. I should mention at this point too, for the left side of the image, I created this perspective grid around this point when I was uh, drawing. So the left side, this environment is a two point perspective. So this is a perspective grid I created to keep everything uh, aligned in perspective um, and looking three-dimensional. So I made sure to do this ahead of time so I don't have too many uh, errors or mistakes as I'm going along. Okay, next layer. Quite a lot in this layer here. Now here I'm actually establishing some form to these buildings. So you can see the vanishing points, or not that, sorry, the, uh, the lines are going to the vanishing point for these buildings here. And some nice uh, some nice shapes to the buildings too. I'm trying not to keep them all rectangular, too rectangular, so I have some like triangular shape here, kind of like a sphere there, just to give it a bit more variety. Uh, representation of some type of dock here on the shore. And 
this might be like a parking garage for instance and each one of these is kind of like a level just to give it some different shapes and forms so it doesn't look too generic looking and also this building again vanishing point these all go to the vanishing point on the left over here so trying to keep that in mind some major shapes in the background this major building in the background and checking the upper right does it give me a nice silhouette and I feel it does so move on here this layer was kind of an afterthought because I wanted this face to kind of uh, be translucent so I needed the background to bleed through this face a bit so I extended the water into the face and um, some different colors and values here here again a lot of creative energy at this point so I wanted to get this face down because I knew it would be one of the more challenging parts of the image and it is such a key focal point so I have a man's face here uh, the two light sources left and right off and on just establishing some of the major forms here I wanted his eyes to be closed give him a very calm look I wanted wanted him to have kind of thicker bigger lips um, kind of an older man uh, squarish nose kind of these wrinkles coming off of the uh, under his cheeks here make him look a little more aged and let's turn that off okay next layer now here I did quite a lot on this left sided one layer as you can see I added windows to this building in the background here so I can draw um, reflecting the sky um, make it seem a bit more alive add some different materials um, but not not going too crazy keeping it really loose and painterly because I don't want it to be too refined on the non focal point areas um, it also helps the whole image seem a bit more interesting to look at if you don't refine everything like crazy and just refine the focal points so here I'm actually as you can see you know giving this uh, foreground building some interesting shapes um, you know a balcony here make it look look more lived in like it's a place people might actually occupy or live in um, if the representation of some type of brickwork here some doors um, some different values on the building like this value compared to that value extending up and down um, vertical lines to make it look taller um, windows here reflecting the sky again um, it kind of strength strengthens the composition and um, just makes it a little more interesting to look at also um, darken the ground up a bit added like sidewalking here road in the background um, the primary light source the sun setting which creates a nice symmetry with the right side here and reflections in um, some very strong reflections here of the sunlight uh, in these puddles on the ground um, this is not entirely accurate um, based on the viewpoint here but you can fake stuff like that a little bit for the sake of uh, like composition or interest value okay let's get rid of that okay next layer let's see what this did okay right side here created a, a bunch of boats in the background here um, this main boat here some type of vessel traveling towards the background this main vanishing point here so again it leads your eye to the background um, just fills out this empty area a bit more too so this is some type of maybe fishing vessel or very small commercial vehicle or something uh, you can see some representation of some people very rough and loose back here and let's see what else did I change okay here adding a lot of details um, very loose and rough on these buildings trying to get some cool shapes um, some round shapes here for windows um, you know vertical strips to strengthen the height of these buildings and also represent windows as well to make them look more realistic and lived in and you can see the windows are quite small which makes the buildings seem that much bigger too and here I'm just again trying to get major shapes down major forms and again you can see I've changed added some like pikes to the top of this building again just trying to keep things looking interesting let's get rid of that layer okay next one here now this one yeah quite a lot done here mostly on the left side of the image so let's go on and off on and off and see what kind of changed here let's zoom in 
you know, added some shrubbery. Um, even cities have uh, some type of greenery in them. It makes them look more realistic and more pleasing to look at, too, if you show some vegetation of some sh uh, some sort. So I added some trees here, some maybe a hanging plant here, um, some lights on the top here. I wanted uh, this strong blue light to contrast with, with this kind of... Uh, kind of magenta or pinkish color to the sky and the primary light source. So I thought that would kind of give a nice nice look to the whole scene and I kind of follow that through to the right side as well where blue light is often the secondary light source and add some nice color accents. So added some signage here to these buildings. Here again uh, random neon lights. Um, well not random, I chose uh, specific brush strokes to give it some nice flow um, representative maybe advertising. I made up my own type of lettering here so it's not legible but it gives the repre representation that it is some type of uh, written written words on there but because it's not legible it's not distracting either and if you don't think of the right wording for for advertising it can be cheesy too um, so you really got to be careful with that so yeah added some more signs on the side here Give some nice silhouettes. Uh, again, uh, some different form to this building, so it's not just too boxy looking. Um, same thing as up here. Let's see. Okay, here I did quite a bit on the ground. Um, some type of vehicle here shining a light down the alley. It kind of leads your eye to the back too, and this way as well. It creates a bit of an interest factor, makes it more like a real city, because most cities have vehicles. Um, some secondary blue lighting, uh, some type of maybe vending machine here, some more lights on the side over the doorway. Oh, excuse me. Okay, get rid of that layer. Next layer. Okay, here, boom, boom, off, on, off, on. So I'm strengthening, strengthening the lighting going across this water here, adding more of that reflection of the sky to the water, that pinkish kind of magenta type hue. Let's see what else here. Okay, uh, extending, um, working on these windows here. So it bleeds, the left and right kind of part of this collage kind of bleed together. So I'm trying to establish where they should bleed together. I didn't want it to be right in the center because then it would be a little boring looking. So I made sure to kind of offset it a bit and have the values kind of merge gradually into one another because it makes it look a little cooler. Same thing with the bottom. Oh yes, here's the important thing too. Um, right here, these kind of spherical protrusions kind of coming out of this building. Uh, some type of large, large, large window, for example. Um, have to get some reflections on there that are going to be quite different from the the flat windowing here and I want it to be a bit more of a focal point so they reflect the water and ground here on this part the sky and the dark part of the sky there. Get rid of that layer, next layer. Let's zoom out to see what this changed. Okay, all on the right side. Okay, you can see added a lot of signage here in the background makes it look more realistic, add some of those blue colors that I needed as a secondary light source kind of different random types types of advertising here. See on and off. Lights on the side of the buildings. Make them look a bit more realistic. Add some big really low opacity blue strokes up and down these buildings to make it almost glow so to speak. You know small lights here and there. Lights in the sky so uh, some type of small aircraft uh, could see these buildings at night. And uh, technically, a lot of buildings do have lights on the external part of the buildings, too. So it makes it a little more interesting looking, too. Okay, next layer here. What does this change? This is mostly just atmospheric perspective. So pushing that building uh, scene back a bit from the foreground, water, and boat objects here. Let's see. Okay, also added some type of flying craft here. Maybe some advertis advertisements on the side that change as it's flying around. Kind of this big uh, gargantuan looking ship that's just like slowly like moving through the sky. And another one in the background to give it a sense of scale. 
as well. Let's see here. Okay, I also added some very small vehicles here, traveling along this this highway here. And this gives it a sense of movement as well. Um, Add some nice uh, pops of color and also helps establish the scale a bit too. Because a lot of the times we can tell scale by things we're very familiar with and people and vehicles, for example. Um, we have a very strong sense of how big they are. So they help define the city and make the whole thing look even bigger. You know, lights on the end of the docks here where the, these boats would be. At this point, I've also established a bit of a reflection in the water. Very, very slight, but it's there just to uh, make it look a little more realistic and, you know, flesh out um, the feel of this water a bit so it's not so static looking. Um, some type of buoy structure in the water, again, leads your eye to the background, makes it look a bit more realistic fills out this kind of empty area right there too. Okay, next layer. Off on, off on. Let's see what this changed. So you can see, added some reflections to these windows here. Some more signage along this left building here. Let's see. Add some little teeny tiny little pot type lights on this railing structure which I thought it needed just to separate it from uh, the area behind it and it makes it a little, little more futuristically and adding some nice pops of uh, higher value colors because we want to utilize the value range as much as we can. Added some type of siren on this uh, hovercraft here to make it look like maybe a police vehicle of some sort, some type of law enforcement. Um, some people in the background kind of fleshing out the city, giving it a bit of scale, um, some more liveliness too. And also the quality on this is not as high as the original because um, the original takes up so much of my memory if I open it in Photoshop. So this is only 4096 by about the same um, height image. So it's quite low resolution. Um, the original image is about three times as big. Um, so yeah, I apologize if there is some uh, quality decrease when I zoom in here. Let's see, yeah, more lighting to these lights, strengthening it a bit. Let's see, what's the next layer here? What does this change? Okay, working on the ground a bit more, adding some reflections to these puddles. Uh, reflections are the main subject matter, the things that matter. They don't have to be perfect, but reflecting the sky, um, you know, the signage on the building here, tracing um, from my line of sight into the image, bouncing it off the water, um, back into the subject matter, and seeing basically where the light's uh, flowing and where your eye line of sight is flowing to decide where these reflections should be. So again, getting some of these lamps here. Okay, next layer. Okay, this layer, all I did was this. Now, this is my secondary kind of big subject matter here. Um, just trying to get it down. Big blocky values, um, not paying too much attention to color, just trying to get a silhouette. So I want to have this female character kind of running down this alley from these three um, animals pursuing her, uh, probably part of this law enforcement vehicle here. So they're some maybe canine unit or something. So you can see I'm trying to establish a nice uh, flow to these dogs running, trying to get their anatomy right. Um, does it look good from from far away? Small, it looks good. You can tell where the dogs are. They have a nice line flow down the alley chasing her. They have some strength to their run, to their step. So they're looking good so far to me. Let's see what this did. Now here on the right, I just did a little minor variations. I got fixed some of these highlights in the water that were bugging me a bit. Added some very small highlights in the background um, to give the idea of um, things receding in the background getting smaller so that helps make it, it uh, strengthens the perspective a bit more um, through foreshortening and convergence. Okay, let's go to the right here. Now here we've added a bit of atmospheric perspective to push this building in the background farther back, this one here. 
added strengthened oops, oops, uh, strengthened uh, what is it, the lighting on this advertisements these advertisements here made them glow a bit more seem a bit brighter uh, same thing with the police vehicle shining the light these lamps and also I filled in a lot of the details on this this lady running away from these dogs so she's kind of wearing a tattered type uh, trench coat some type of uh, futuristic eye glass device that perhaps shows her information on uh, her environment as she's moving around some kind of futuristic pistol weapon here pointing back towards the dogs leading her eye to the dogs to the subject matter showing a bit of suspense and tension and also a uh, I wanted the dogs to seem a bit um, intimidating, so I gave them these kind of orange glowing eyes. So they look a bit fierce as they're chasing her. Now this layer, as you can see, I added eyebrows to the face because <laughs> for some reason I originally forgot to add eyebrows and I, I couldn't figure out why it looks so weird. I'm like, oh, that's one reason it could look weird. Um, Strengthen some of the lighting on the face. Um, in the lips, added a bit more depth, added some areas where the light's going to hit a bit more from left and right, so it's not so black here. And also um, added some more pops of highlight on the nose, you can see. Off, oops, sorry, off and on. And then also I added this um, again, add a bit of symmetry here, um, repeating shapes. So this guy also has a very similar type holographic uh, eyepiece, um, eyeglass piece, so to speak, that shows him information, um, some type of data about his environment, and it also just helps his face look a bit more interesting, um, add some nice pop of color there too, which uh, kind of complements the environment, especially the sky type hues that you have there. And also this is going to be a little bright, so it's going to add some light onto his, onto his nose, some of the light from that eyepiece onto his cheeks, onto his upper lip area a bit too, and his upper brow as well. Now let's get rid of this drawing layer, it's a bit distracting. Okay. Now this layer, all I did was add I, this whole face looked a little too symmetrical, so I needed to break that up a bit. So I thought I could strengthen this alleyway a bit, make it a bit darker, flowing down here, make it seem a bit more um, noirish, uh, darker, and kind of intimidating and grimy. By extending it down over the face, it breaks some of the symmetry of that face as well, and it helps it seem a bit more translucent. So I, I like that change quite a bit. Okay, now this one, I think the major change is this light. This light was not strong enough for me, so I really had to strengthen that, that light on this police vehicle shining down this alley. You can see the change there. And it helps almost um, occlude the person driving this vehicle, making it seem a bit more mysterious as well and it adds a bit more of a focal point utilizing that value range a bit more and we also have reflections here of the dog running over this puddle as well now next one these adjust adjustments are uh, the major one is the hue I made it the whole image a bit more saturated because it was a little washed out looking a little too muted for my liking so I saturated the whole image a bit more Strengthen those uh, those colors, making it a little more chromatic, and also adjusted the levels. So you know, again, looking a little washed out. So push those darks back a bit. Um, you can see the shadowed areas here. They still show through the cast shadows from this person and the dog, but it just strengthens the whole composition makes it read better, less washed out, makes it seem richer and deeper. Okay, and last thing, add my signature in the bottom left there. And that's about it. You turn this black and white layer on, you can see how the values read, and I'm really happy with them. 
a uh, lot of big pops of uh, lighter values, a lot of deeper, darker values. So that's uh, this little tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanted to keep this around 10 minutes, but I think I've gone way, <laughs> way over that. So in the future, I'm going to have to, I want to keep stuff like this to about 10 minutes long, just going through quickly, boom, 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 over the layers, kind of showing you the process of different paintings and different thought processes as doing different types of pictures. So if you have any feedback or comments, uh, please let me know. And thanks for watching.